Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Florida Gators football and the orange and blue spring game here inside the swamp. 75 degrees, couldn't ask for a better day here. Physicality. 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 You run and you hit. You run and you hit. Sir. Roll call at the ball. Compete all day long. Compete all day long. No drop the finish. Every single rep. Compete, compete, compete. Let's go. Hey, look here. We in the swamp, man. Right? We in the swamp. Yes, sir. Aim the one way. Right? Aim the one way to play in the swamp. Let's go. Take the ball. Stop the run. And we're running the ball and making plays on us. Play fast, start the game, baby. Start fast, baby. Langley to throw here for the third time. Lobs it down the seam, caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Gators. A completion to Aiden Mizell. That one is blown up by LJ McCray. Last way to throw, good air under it. Left side, reaching square toe on the near sideline. To an offense. Drills went downfield. Wilson caught the 30. 20, 15, 10, 5. He'll walk into the end zone. Hey! Woo! Okay. Hey! Line away from the 5. There you go. There's a dart over the middle. Yeah, caught great. by Spirito. Touchdown, Orange. Oh, Leads. Yeah. Jackson to the 45 on the far sideline. Turns upfield. Back to Lagway, throws, intercepted at the 38-yard line. It's called, that ball's picked off, Denson's got it. Oh, no, yeah. And the distance, and it is good. 19 to 17, the final. Trey Smack kicks the game winner. Which, which one me to do? <laughs> you want me to keep it a buck with you? And then we got this. And I, I know Stephen Harris about to tell some damn lies. Like, I don't know what you want from me. How could you, how could you still be reminiscent about last year? How could you not just be slurping down this Kool-Aid, ready to rock and roll? If you're, if you're not, you need to pinch yourself because we're back, baby. I, was not, I wasn't going to do it. I wasn't going to do it. And then they post that video. What do you want me to do? It's not my fault, okay? Good evening, boys and girls. Welcome back to another episode, of course, to High Top Sports. Happy to have all of you here on this beautiful Monday. I'm a little bit late. It's Dave's fault. We're not going to get into that. No need to point any fingers. But without further ado, it's the first champs corner of the season. To tell you that I'm fired up is an understatement. Hey, I'm jazzed up, riled up, fired up. Whatever word you want to plug into that, I'm that, okay? It's going to be some good stuff. And, of course, we got some film, all right? I got a little, I got jitters there when I, when I said it out loud. Not, not going to lie to you. You know, I love a little, little rewind. You know, Coach, Coach Stephen Harris, I, I, you see that? And I go, yeah, I did. I did. I did see that. It roused me up. It roused me up. So we're going to talk all about it. Recap the game from a player's perspective. I always love getting Stephen Harris' perspective on these things. So, And I know you guys do, too. I know you guys do, too. So buckle up, buttercup. Let's go get it on. What's up, champ? What's going on? What's going on, boss? How you doing? <laughs> doing well. Go Gators. Peak the hoodie. Love the hoodie. Hey, Looking yeah. Good. Yeah, yeah. Y'all visit the merch shop, man. Hot Talk mm. Sports without the S. H Sports with the T. Just T at the end. All right? No no sports. No S. Couldn't com. afford the S. Couldn't afford the S. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Stephen Harris, before we get into it, if you if you could summarize the game. Oh, it was excited. The, vi the video, first of all, this is my first time seeing it. It was, it was amazing. Yeah, uh, the, the game was great, man. Um, it was great to see what we had, uh, to see the changes that we've made um, and to see where those guys are headed. And um, just from me watching it, I could tell you we're, we're it looked like we we're ahead of schedule to me. Um, the guys look like they buying in. Um, I like the response from the players. I like the way they played. I like the energy they play with. Uh, even though it was a spring game, we got to see some of our guys be a little chippy. Um, it, it was a point where I watched it and I was like, are they teammates? <laughs> like, uh, right. uh, some, of, some of the way they were pushing each other around after the play, uh, just, that just lets me know that those guys are really getting after it. Um, it made, made me smile, man. Um, I like to see how far our defensive line has come. Um, I like to see where our linebackers are at. Uh, I like watching, uh, a young guy out there, uh, Mr. 10, um, he, he looks relentless. Yeah, man. 
he looks uh relentless out there he looks looks fantastic i'm not gonna lie man I, i'm impressed with what i saw out of him i'm impressed with our, our young running back uh mr Ba. uh man look it's a lot to be uh, excited for um our offensive line played well um they're doing certain parts of the games where i was looking for uh specific things and uh it, it's, it's a lot to be excited for man uh we look better than we did in games last year Ooh. in the spring this year okay okay so let's look yeah. i went back and watched the game a couple of times i have i want to see the full game I'm, I'm i like to watch the ins and outs obviously that they, they have the highlight reel which i sent you you get a, you get a good taste not a full taste so i can't wait for the full right. game to come out to really consume it even more to talk about it some more that's all we're gonna have for the next yeah. couple of months big takeaways brandon crenshaw left tackle right tackle right tackle right tackle he's good at football yeah. that guy knows what he's doing yeah. when it comes to playing football that's refreshing to for see sure. um Aza Turner, loved him, loved him back yeah. there. Uh, and so here's we. I talked about it with Judd. We talked about like Tom Brady. Tom Brady had it between between the years, right? Mm -hmm. no, nowhere near the physical specimen. What I what I love about Aza Turner, I mean, he's obviously grown into his his role, but you can just tell he has it up here. He's a quarterback of the yeah. defense, right? He just he's a he's a wizard of the game. He's cutting yeah. angles because he knows he's not the most athletic guy out there. Is he? Is he he's not, not saying he's that athletic, but you know what I'm saying compared to his peers. Yeah. He's had to overcome some of those things, and it's up here. You can just tell the way that he's moving. He's moving very just swiftly and making good and right decisions. Um, look, yeah. you get a guy with Eugene Wilson out there, you're going to get beat. It is what it is. Yeah. They get beat a couple of times, but they made adjustments. Love seeing those things. What I also love, speaking between the years and having the physical ability, DJ fucking bad way, Steven. I mean, what you want me to do, yes. bro? Yeah, I mean, yeah, no, yeah. I, I didn't even get to that. <laughs> I mean, Connor Clark said it perfectly. Connor Clark, Hollywood. I was in the middle of the game, and he goes, dude, you hear about DJ struggling at practice. You can confirm this. He said Tebow, I got struggled during practice. The lights mm -hmm. turn on, 90,000 plus screaming at you. Doesn't matter what happened in the last five days. Got it, buddy's dialed in. He's a gamer. And that's what we saw in the first first couple of quarters. Struggled towards the end there a little bit. Obviously, I think probably things changed, and we'll get into that here with your perspective on yeah. that. But buddy was dialed in, slinging the rock like nobody's business. Looked like he's been doing this for ages. The game... Yeah felt competitive the game felt healthy in a good way it felt like it was a chess match and each person was putting on their best to beat the other person versus last year it was sloppy football versus excitingness and, and some explosive plays this year felt mm -hmm. very well connected very well organized very disciplined and again it's always hard to tell it's spring it's practice what are we what are we looking yeah. at but the unison looked exceptional and dj lagway everybody's talking about him and they should be yeah uh, and, and shout out to the uh, staff, whoever put the, the team together and, and breaking down uh, who was going to be on what side. Um, you guys did it all the way down to like media staff, which was amazing <laughs> to, to see that uh, type of breakdown. But you guys did a fantastic job uh, to see DJ, uh, the way he operated. Uh, like you said, he didn't look like a freshman. And uh, what I thought was impressive is, and it showed a little bit, as I just thought in moments where he would, try to uh, revert back to what he did in high school because, you know, the competition is not that high. So when you want to make a play, kind of sit in the pocket a little bit, roll out, and hopefully um, no one's there and you can make a long pass. But just to see him sit in the pocket um, mm -hmm. and, and make some of those throws and not get too antsy and look co as comfortable as he did uh, spoke about, speaks volumes about the type of player he's going to be. And then the preparation that he – uh, puts into the game, man. Um, I, I love to see it. He didn't just rely on his athletic ability. And I must say, he looks faster in person uh, or just in the game watching him than he, than he did in high school. Yeah, he looks, man, yeah. Because he, he's, he's he out there with college like players. So, no, like so when you see him running, you think, okay, he's pulling away from high schoolers. But uh, to see him running out there with college guys, he's a lot faster than I thought. So. Very much so. And again, just his composure, I thought was fantastic. I think both lines, which were, I mean, I'm going to destroy your brain here in a minute about the, the line <laughs> work that we had. Um, look, there's, is there going to be some complaints? Is there going to be things, things to be concerned about? Absolutely. Was it a little messy in some areas? We saw some special team woes, which we talked about on the Saturday call -in show. Absolutely. <laughs> but again, overall, it just felt much cleaner than, than it was last yeah. year. That was refreshing. And so what was cool is we, we talked about this since January, we've talked about strength and conditioning. We've talked about how important this time is. And I'm, I'm a nobody, so I understand sometimes that doesn't mean anything. 
and you've said it as well, but sometimes you hear from the same people, it starts to lose its value. I was talking to Casey Tate. You're familiar with that uh, with that young man, mm-hmm. played tight end for your, for your football team mm-hmm. for a couple of years. And he said it too. He said, look, the game is won in January. The season is won, excuse me, in January and February. And it's just refreshing to hear something that you and I have been, you know, boasting back and forth. Casey Tate's not watching the show, comes in out of nowhere. And he, he right. brings it up just to kind of reemphasize how important this time of the year is. And I think what we saw there was that there's still a long way to go. There's still a lot of practice. Right. There's a lot of work right. that are going to happen over the summer where there's more progression. Because think about where we were last year. I felt like we looked much Thanks. better going into game one. We're, we're, we're light years ahead. Yeah. Of, and I know the schedule is a gauntlet. And I understand <clears> that. And the schedule may not represent what this team is necessarily. The record may not. But I know we're ahead. That doesn't mean other teams we're going to go against are not ahead, but we are ahead of progress. And uh, yeah. the talent on that football team, LJ McCray, like freshman, that guy, that, the thing that he's a freshman, yeah, right? Yeah. Him and DJ Lagwood, I think those two guys are freshmen, is yeah. absolutely insane. Pup Howard, limited playing time. Sharif Denson, sophomore. We saw his big tackle. You and I went mm, during the video. Yeah. A pick. Again, a sophomore that didn't get much playing time last year, but definitely had playing time. This is the talent that Billy's been evaluating for for quite some time now. Aaron Gates played out of his mind, right? right? Another guy who didn't right. play much last year due to injury comes in. This is kind of his freshman campaign. Move hit moved him positions, excelling. You know who got? You know honestly who looked got to to get beat? Jason Marshall. Still luckily he's getting get whooped <laughs> out there. You, he couldn't guard Eugene Wilson. Eugene Wilson told him a couple <laughs> times. You're not. I'm the real number three, bitch. That's what it looked, I mean. I'm not, I can't confirm or deny, but if I'm reading yeah, body no. language, that's what it looked like. <laughs> Look, I um man, I, I agree. We have so many pieces to be excited about. And what I like about the game is that we didn't try to just feature one guy or one specific uh, uh skill group or whatever. Um we kind of let the game play and let the guys show what they have. Uh the ball was spread around uh pretty evenly and guys got to show what they what they have, guys who we normally don't look at. Like you saw, I, I didn't even mention us uh getting uh LJ. And um, it took me a while to get the DJ because we know what the, what those bring. Then you get Denison and all these other guys who's showing um, what they can do on the football field. I'm excited about the depth that we have and the, the way they competed. And like you said about the workouts, my concern was because I know how we worked out in 06. And obviously, if you watch Swamp Kings, you saw us yelling and trying to choke each other out and all that other stuff, which I knew the level of aggression we had. Obviously, they probably don't do the same things we did so i was concerned about how hard were these guys actually going without having to choke each other out <laughs> you know what i mean sure so to see it on the field uh the the change in how they play and the physicality that they play let me know that uh we're trending definitely trending in the right direction and of course there are things that i saw that i'm like okay we still got to work here in that area but i can see the progression um and, and know that okay well by the time fall comes we should have all of this right here cleaned up and the guys that are listening and taking the coaching you can see the evidence and the way they play which gives me a lot of hope about uh where we're going to be come fall and uh it's, it's very promising man we got a lot of guys out there a lot of young guys with a, a lot of talent on that football field and they're putting in the work so let's let's get into this film footage a little bit and then obviously we'll talk some more about the game because it's i mean th- i think watching this clip here will give us some some more things to talk about uh, the biggest thing, I think, look, the line, I think on both ends, I think it was very competitive. Uh, the line held yeah. up very well. There's a lot of times where Graham was able to go through his progressions, and you see some of those big breakout plays up the field. I mean, mm-hmm. that that bomb to, to Eugene Wilson, which we saw splitting the, the safety yeah. in the corner, it was a 40-yard touchdown pass. That doesn't happen if the line doesn't stay intact. There no, was a crossing fantastic route. route, too. Exactly. There's another crossing route <laughs> that Eugene did, I think, on uh, Jason Marshall. Or maybe it was Sharif Tenson. I don't remember who who had it, but the cornerback held him for about halfway through, and it's like, look, you can't hold him forever. And honestly, right. everyone played their position. I watched it a couple times back and back and see, like, where was the drop-off? Like, what happened? Where did we go wrong? And to me, it was it was the the play rip ran perfectly. That if, hey, we if we block, and if they play well, this is going to be open, but it has to have time to develop. The defense locked down A and B, and C was able to get open because it's supposed to. It was a man-on-man coverage. And right. th- there's the, or maybe it was zone. So that zone was open, but it has to be a perfect timing and everything has to hold true to that for that to happen. And it did. So you're right. always trying to figure out like, Hey, who dropped the ball? 
Well, sometimes you may you call perfect, <laughs> perfect, perfect uh, defense yeah. to play, but there's always going to be a hole. It just matters what breaks first. And so that's right. what I was kind of looking for is like, where is the air? So we got a clip here. Talk to me a little bit about it before or you should I hit play and then you want to go or how do you want to do this? Uh, you know, you, we can, I can talk. The reason why I sent you this clip is just, this is just confirmation for me from the difference between last year and this year. Uh, just okay. even just from an alignment standpoint, uh, you can see where the ball is placed. You know, I talked about last year, how far we used to be off the ball. Sure. Um, our defense line with the space in between the offensive line and the defensive line. And you can see we're crowding the ball here. Uh, if if I was a ref, I wouldn't know if we were almost offside or not if I was on the sideline. So that just that's a good sign to me that let me know that we're crowding the ball. And when you crowd the ball, that let me know you're ready to attack, uh, ready to come out your hips. So if you press play, uh, a lot of the times last year when the ball was snapped, the ball would be in the quarterback's hand. If like he's in shotgun here, the quarterback, he's uh, not right up under the center. So when the ball is snapped, the ball would normally be in the quarterback hands before we even cross the line of scrimmage or come out of our hips. And if you press play here, you can see as soon as the ball is snapped, people are moving. Like the ball isn't even hitting hands yet, and we're crossing, coming out of our hips as a defensive line. We're making contact before the ball gets to the quarterback oh, yeah, yeah. hands. You're, yeah, you're, you, you did it. You, no, yeah. You, you, that we didn't we didn't have that last year, and then what, you can see Big Cam. Sorry, I'm firing hmm? up. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, you're right. <laughs> that that we didn't have that last year at all. That that little difference makes means everything. But then you see Cam here. He comes out his hips. Uh, he smashes the guard, knocks him back, shares the block, and then goes to make a tackle here. But this um, what I was talking to Cam about about penetrating. If you go back <laughs> to the beginning. You can see as soon as the ball snap, he's coming out of it. He's not thinking about what he's doing. He's coming forward. And then he knocks the guy back. The guy has to take a, like a bucket step to try to get the block. But it's too late. He's making the running back cut in the backfield. Uh, you got big Cam Banks in there holding his holding his uh, fort down, holding his gap. And our defensive end uh, sets the edge. And everybody's able to eat. But it starts up front. You got big Cam knocking the guard back into the backfield. Uh, I think that's two, three slaughter. yards in yeah, that's he's pushing slaughter oh, back. Yeah, yeah. So he's knocking them two, three yards into the backfield. We didn't have that last year. And look, so here's again because you're, you're it's a guy it's guy on guy action, right? Right. It's t- team on team crime. I, I, you compliment to the O line because obviously this is this is an all out blitz here, right? Like they're they're bringing the house, so mm-hmm. they know it's a run, and this is something that you know offensive calling's got to struggle with. The whole house is coming, and I, I mean for me the O line last year i mean it crumbled pretty heavily but slaughter trying to hold up cam jackson did his best right you got it looks like damian george is releasing here which he he's coming up job. to get the field that I, linebacker he's I, trying I, to I'm on not the quite sure what he's not quite sure what he's doing he, he, he ran past him and he goes oh shoot that was my yeah <laughs> he's moving fast this is a good whiff move <laughs> I, I feel like i mean i could be wrong here but he's useless up there shouldn't he have cut underneath who's that Damian George, right guard there. So he he busts through like no no, yeah he's he's supposed to come and seal the the, the outside right backside linebacker. No no he's supposed to seal them to the he wants to put his butt towards the bottom sideline so the running back if he cuts in the hole he can cut off his backside. But because Cam blows it up, there's no hole there. Gotcha. So he's okay, supposed so to the hole is supposed to be in between Slaughter and the right tackle, and he and then that right. hole right here between. Cam Jackson and right. Yeah, the play is headed these. to the left, but they give the option for the running back to put his foot in the ground and come back side. So that the uh, the guard is climbing up to that linebacker to seal them off. Gotcha. Which he didn't do his job either there, but it's just because Cam yeah. blew up the slaughter. So then the running back had to bop even further out left, which that's where the blitz was called, right? I mean, you see it gets yeah. three on two here, and they were just out covering. Mm-hmm. And don't forget, guys, this is our secondary offensive line. Austin Barber's not playing either as Cam Waits. So it's definitely something we're definitely yeah. going to keep an eye on. I would imagine the transfer portal is maybe adding one more. I would I would say, look, you're, if you're going to go get a guy, you need to go get an all-in guy. We don't need another depth piece. You need to go get another Crenshaw, mm-hmm. who is exceptional at football. If I, I right. don't know if I mentioned that or not. Um, I, I think one more piece like that would be absolutely huge. I like Damian George, but there's still a lot of question marks, I think, with him at right guard. This this play doesn't mm-hmm. do him any favors, <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I love what you're saying here, what the D-line is doing. I mean, just getting off the ball quickly. And even, I don't know who this is here on the edge. I think it might be Aaron Gates coming off yeah, the edge yeah. here. Gets, gets checked quickly, 
but doesn't quit. Yeah. And the only uh, at the bottom of the screen, yeah. I would just have him get more hands on the guy instead of just ripping up through there. But because he know he needed to set that edge, that's kind of fine. He did his job, but then he knifes up the field, which makes the running back have to cut back more, uh, not leaving any space. So I, I like that about him and uh, just being physical yeah, at the at sure the point of attack. It. Sharif Denton. It looks like he block, got busted through Hayden Hanson there as a as a tight end. So blocking was yeah. a little poor on this play, but ultimately I think, like you said, and the, but yeah, and that, yeah, that's no shout at the at the offensive line. Uh, more so as we didn't have none of this last year from up front. Uh, everybody's hitting their blocks soon as the ball moves, and that's what that's what we need. Um, there's other plays where the offensive line, I thought, ran us out, <laughs> ran, sure. ran us off the field. On some plays, uh, if you look at the film, uh, they got some good push on some plays. But um, for defensively, as bad, worse, as bad as we struggled last year, this is night and day. This is one in one play is night and day. And I seen that uh, consistently throughout the game where they were crowding the ball, coming out of their hips. Now, some people still, you know, still struggle with coming out of their hips as well as others, you know, just because of habit. Uh, game time comes and you kind of go back to what you know. So it's going to take a little more coaching. Um, but I just believe in the work that they're putting in and seeing it uh, just, you know, lets me know that we're, we're headed in the right direction. We were glitching there. Hold on. I wasn't done showing you because <laughs> of what I don't know what happened, but I'm going to pull this back up and put, put it over our faces mm -hmm. really quick. What I want to show is what we've been watching all year. And what I'm seeing when I see this here, what you're just talking about, so look at Cam Jackson. Cam Jackson's over the center there, over the over Jake Slaughter who snaps the ball. So you're talking about coming off the line, but what I when I what I see when I watch this is that drill of them on their knees right. and busting. <laughs> right, that's what that is. That's exploding out of your hips. Exactly. Look, I mean, you're spot on. I mean, look, Jake Slaughter isn't even ready yet, which I say is why that center position is so hard because you're trying to do two things at once. He's, mm -hmm. he's on his back foot already, which I think he recovers as best as he can. But you got a guy like Cam Jackson. Yeah, it's gonna be tough. Right. But Cam Jackson plays it perfectly, and he just gets beat. I mean, that's and that's that's what I meant by like it's tough because it's your guy getting beat. But I love it. All the guys, you can tell it's that drill. They're all exploding mm -hmm. off the line there. I think perfectly. that's Tyreek Sapp. Yeah. Tyreek Sapp makes a little bit of a step, and that could just be because Damian George was back a little bit. Yeah. Our it, offensive it's line it's honestly it's looks a little dis dis disembobulated here. Yeah, for Sap on this play, uh, Sap would be the second person on the line of scrimmage at the top for anybody who don't know. Uh, just his stance, um, so he doesn't come out of his hill. And it could, he could be in that stance just because he wants to try to read the guard just in case he's has a read block, I mean, a reach block where the guard will be going the opposite way of where he's going. And sometimes it's hard to, to beat that reach block. So you kind of get in like a crouched up stance so you can see what he's doing. But outside of coming out of his hips, um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say poorly. I'm not sure exactly what he's trying to do here, but he does get pressure on the guy, so he still gets his hands on the guy and comes down the line of scrimmage. You, I, want, I you would like to see him get more hands on the guy to help the linebacker see where George is trying to go. If he gets more hands on George, it kind of frees up that linebacker a little bit more. But he still squeezes down the line perfectly. Um, he holds the edge. Holds well, so, so my thing, like you said, he's taking, he's making an extra movement here. And if mm -hmm. depending on the play, I mean that that gives the offensive line kind of like right here he's he has no power, right? Because no, he steps under himself, right? Yeah, and so you could see the other two guys, K Cam Banks and Cam Jackson, Caden Caleb Banks. The difference coming out of the hips, yeah, and that is and that's huge improvement. Both guys, <laughs> yeah. well, Caleb yeah. Banks is is young, and again we didn't see much of Joey Slackman, probably due to injury, but also due to the improvement that we're seeing here in Caleb Banks of just being able to explode through right. the hip. So those two things are very exciting. And the Terry like Sapp thing. Go ahead. You remember when I was saying, in the one drill, I was saying, hey, you don't want to take a big step. You want to come out of your hips. Your hips should be moving first before you take the step. Yeah. That's an example where you look at the two between uh, one guy who takes a step and steps under himself and the other guys who come out of their hips. And look, it benefited him here because the guard happened to move, like wasn't focused on him, so it didn't, he, mm -hmm. it didn't expose him. But if you're what we're saying here, we're, we're able to see the the difference because the other two guys right next to him did what they were supposed to do. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not sure what that 
edge who that might be Aaron Gates. I guess he's holding the case, but I I would have liked to maybe see him bite a little bit more, but maybe he's got to hold back on the be the QB spy here, probably, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very right, facts. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, even look at even Eugene J- Wilson down here in the bottom left. Yeah. Get, get, <laughs> Man, get, get some block action. <laughs> You know what I liked about Asa Turner? Uh, can I, if I can go there, uh, yeah, he's not right even here, necessary on this play. He's right yeah, there. but not even, but just that effort right here to always want to be on a tackle. Um, and I seen that throughout the day where he was flying around. He might have missed the tackle, but he gets right up and still gets on the plate. He's uh, there, but because he, but because he's playing with relentless effort, even though he misses that tackle, his teammate is able to come and recover and make the tackle for him. Um, and I don't know if you guys remember last year where I was talking about you got to shoot your gun and allow your teammates to Trust your come teammates. help you. Right. Asa, Asa does that. He, he's not afraid to go and shoot his gun. And he's so smart um, just from, and it's not in this clip, but uh, some other clips where just watching him play, he knows where the ball is going. Uh, he knows the angle to take to get there. He knows what the, the offensive person is trying to do. And he always kind of beats them to the point. Uh, so just seeing that uh, made me very excited because he's, he's a smart player. And just to see his reaction time on certain plays, you could tell that he's processing it at a lot faster pace than most of the guys For out sure. there. Uh, just in his reaction time and what he's doing versus what they're doing. You can tell they're still trying to dissect the play. And Ace is like, no, it's coming over here. Come on, guys. <laughs> like, so uh, that that's very, very promising. It, it's nice to see, too, the – it looks like everybody's playing as if they trust that, hey, this guy's doing Ooh. his job, like you just said. Yeah. And even Ace on that play, man, holding Borningham up, shedding the block, man. That's, that's big time for a safety. Yeah, you got a tight end on you. Uh, you setting the edge like as if you was a defensive end. Uh, so, yeah, I, I love it. Man, it's it's not much, but it's, uh, it's definitely something to be excited about. Also, I mean, look, the wide receiver room, Aiden Mazzell was balling with DJ Lagway. Ooh, yes. Balling. I I can't wait to see those uh guys, some of those guys on our return team as well, too. Uh Mizell and those guys helping us out um in the special teams, man. That's gonna be major. Muddy says that y'all see number 49, George Gums. I asked about that on the Colin show because again, I couldn't see everybody. He says guys would have had two to three sacks if they counted. George Gums, I've I've been saying yeah. this since the offseason. It's somebody they got yeah. from the the transfer portal. He was a tight end, so not a highly touted uh edge rusher, but very explosive. The guy's absolutely yoked. I think he's like 6'3", yeah. 230, I think, or 240. Um, but look, I think the for the portal, it's going to be interesting. Good thing is portal opened today. We saw a lot of movement for a lot of teams. Florida didn't hasn't had any. doesn't mean we're not going to. We need to have movement. But it feels good that it didn't <laughs> seem like before, like things would just kind of pop off. Nothing's really kind of popped lately. I've heard some, n- some names of what we're going after. Wide receiver room is definitely a, tar- a target and a need, I think. And... Look, I don't want another guy. I want the guy. And I think Eugene has a chance to be that guy. And I think Shamir DK, I'm comfortable with him. But if we want to go be elite and be the next level, we need to find ourselves a Malik Neighbors. We need to find ourselves a Justin Jefferson. We need to find ourselves a Marvin Harrison. You need that difference maker. And Eugene Wilson doesn't give me that. I think Eugene Wilson is a difference maker, but in a different way. You know what I mean? Can A. Mazel step up and be that guy? Possibly. He's 6'2". Yeah. Um, We'll see. I see what you mean. I, and I and I can agree with that because we have guys and not saying our guys can't be that elite level guy like, like you're saying. It's still yet to be told the story, some of them. Uh, so if we are going to take somebody, then they should be top tier at that position. Otherwise, we just let our guys uh, mature into the role. I believe we have enough pieces out there to get the job done. But if we're going to get somebody, it needs to be um, elite level. Yeah, a guy that's going to be a difference maker. You know what I mean? There's there's so much yeah. talent. I mean, think like the Colorado wide receiver room is absolutely insane with the amount of talent. I mean, they did like a pick who they want to throw it to. Like, I think we have the talent that could be there. It's just it's super. It's extremely young still, and yeah. playing in the SEC with these talented cornerbacks and talented linebackers, I think you're going to need a guy that just is is well versed. Uh, look, Shamir DK could. It, it, it's still very new to him. The entire system's new to him. Could him and Graham Mertz with a couple more months together. Yeah. Could that change? Yeah, I think that the ceiling is much higher. How much higher? That part I don't know. And again, maybe a guy coming in, who knows how much that a difference is going to make, but I would like to see them go after it. it. At least they're acknowledging that there's an issue. But if I know Billy, they're not going to over, over send it. But I also think that 
we talked about the other day and I, I made the video called buyer or sellers and people were like, you can't be buyer and sellers in the, in the portal. <laughs> what I meant by it was like, we're in a place where we can maybe go now be aggressive for a certain position versus that we're trying to get a bunch of pieces and we have to be p- peculiar yeah. about it. It's like, look, I don't know what our budget is, but let's just, we have an opportunity. Let's go get two big pieces and just send it because we're, we're that close. And that's where I think yeah. it could be. We have massive, massive depth. Man, just looking at that roster, like we got what, like almost twenty defensive tackles or something. Like, it, it's it's crazy the the amount of depth that we have. Um, you know, teams you know have gotten bigger over the years, but uh, we have a lot of lot of great pieces. And one thing I, I I would like to say though, as far as the defense, I know I forgot to say this. Uh, and we were looking for who was going to replace at defensive end and all this other stuff. Um, I like what Coach Chapman is doing as far as how they are rushing the passer. Uh, you don't see one guy just out there on his own mission. They're kind of work, rushing as a committee, knowing what the quarterback wants to try to do, uh, rushing in the right lanes. And that all that stuff is important um, in the season when you're playing good teams uh, versus someone just trying to always try to get a sack or something like that. But rushing as a committee, pushing the pocket, staying in your lanes, and forcing the quarterback to kind of throw from the pocket. And I saw that a lot. Uh, guys did get uh, free and we were able to get sacks, but a lot of that stuff came from uh, great coverage and then us just rushing as a committee, everybody doing their job and staring in their uh, pass rushing lanes. That's why you didn't get a chance to see a lot of quarterbacks just break the pocket easily and make uh, crazy throws. So uh, shout out to Coach Chapman for that. And um, just those little things mean mean a lot. And uh, we lacked in a lot of that last year. So I was excited for that. Look, I all in all, I mean, there's there's always things you can point and poke at, but I think ultimately, like we said, a lot of things cleaned up. The running back room, like I told you guys, I've been telling you since the day that he left. Hey, does it. it doesn't even look like, like, dude, that was insane. The running yeah. back room, I, eight. And we didn't have Cam Carroll. That's the thing, dude. We were missing Austin Barber, Shamir Jackson, yeah. Derek Wingo, Justice Boone. There's so many talented guys that weren't even on the football field, and we look like we Graham together- didn't even didn't even play. Graham wasn't even there to play. And, he, yeah, and, he sat a know. couple times. They put in Millen a couple times. I mean, he played, but not yeah. like as much as you would think. He played all the played yeah, good more, no, yeah. more than people thought he would, I think. But yeah, both but quarterbacks thrown for level. over 200 yards. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it it was a great showing, man. Um, just seeing the what, what they did progress at, man. Uh, it means a lot. It means a lot. I know a lot of people didn't see what they thought they would see, but you got to be looking. You got to know football to know what you're looking looking for. Uh, it's not just all about points and, and stuff. It's about how we attack players, how we hit blocks, angles, uh, hat placement, and stuff like that. And and, and it showed. And the coaches made great adjustments second half on defense, um, shutting stuff down. And the guys played excited. Most times, you know, the games could get boring, especially a spring game. You know, it's really nothing at stake. But those guys were excited through the whole thing. No, there's a, there's so many people to watch too. I wanted to see obviously Teddy Foster got some snaps, Gregory Smith got some snaps. So learning the numbers and knowing what to look for. There's Fletcher Westfall got a ton of snaps on the on the secondary team. So it was good to see those guys get a lot of reps in and uh, play a healthy healthy game. So it, it's going to be exciting to see you know how this thing unfolds, how we attack the portal here in the next couple next month or so. But yeah, portal. Look, I mean, we know that I like to tell some lies. But uh, <laughs> being there again from going from last year to this year, the turnout was fantastic. Almost fifty thousand people. It felt it felt electric for a Saturday game at noon for a practice. Yeah. When you think about it, like yeah. That. Well, at least we wasn't at a, a tennis stadium, right, bro? I, this is what's crazy. <laughs> like this is what's crazy to me. I, I'm glad you brought this up. Like, I'm all for talking shit, and I under, like, and I get like. You know, Florida hasn't been the best, but you went five and seven and seven and five in a conference where the conference champion went undefeated and got denied out of the playoffs. You play in a dog shit conference, and then to top it all off, you literally were playing in my backyard for your spring game <laughs> with thirteen people with build a bench surrounding the stadium, and that and there's apparently that's going to be their stadium this year, like. The, I what? don't know how much money they're slinging in NIL. You said that's, they, that's not their stadium this year, bro. I don't. I think the 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 stadium is being worked on. I don't know if what's gonna happen, but dude, oh absolutely my god, absolutely pathetic. Yeah. Like if you're on my fashion fans under up. the tent, <laughs> just shut. The, look, like FSU fans, Georgia fans, I understand it, 
but Miami, you just shut. Like, what are you? What are you? What are you run? Like, I get we tell lies, but my my your your mother would be disappointed the lies they're telling. It's disgusting. Man, uh, yeah, it is. I don't know if you have to have a vendor's license to barbecue in somebody's backyard, but I might be out there with the grill selling hot dogs at one of their home games. I, I honestly, I went I went to the wrong game. I should have went there and sold parking parking passes. What I should have done. That's what I should have done. But there been, hey, but the, but nobody would have nobody's gonna pay to park because nobody went. So honestly, I would have lost. I would have lost either way. Look, I don't, I don't, I don't even like to get involved with it. But I, there's this like the Miami fan base is like they're so obnoxious. There's like three of them, and <laughs> like that's like that, that's like capitalizes the entire fan base. They're sharing my clips with like, and that one of all, not even tagging my ass, coward. Number two, they're not even. It's not even in the right context. So you're a dumbass. Number two, number yeah. three, all combined. You know what I'm saying? Like, what what are we doing here? Yeah. Like, I, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't like to, no, I don't like, to, no. I don't like to, to pick, but just just fires me up. Hey man, look, we they on they first on the schedule, so they get the wrap first. <laughs> I also know if they can, you know, they come they're gonna come in here hot and heavy, which I I don't mind, but I it just like that one. Look, guy, I know one thing they won't be prepared for is crowd noise. <laughs> that, that's just people, just people watching the football game. They're gonna be in shock. <laughs> just a, a city full of people is yeah, should be shell shock. Like you have to go to Miami if you just enjoy away games. You know, like you're not there to play for the home team. You're not there to play for your yeah. own crowd. Like it just, it's. Ugh. Yeah, no, yeah. I don't know. Wait. Well, <laughs> God, fired me up, dude. I, I, I was like, you're sharing these clips. Like they're literally playing in someone's backyard. Like they just yeah, basically yeah, the coach called them and was like, "Hey guys, we'll pick up game on Saturday, twelve o'clock. We got, we're gonna be there." Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I don't know. They had supposed to have a zoomed in drone view. You should not show the crowd. Just. Straight down. <laughs> Imagine having a recruit at that game. You know what I mean? Like, hey, Bro. What, what do you get dressed in the porta potty? Like, where's the locker no, rooms? People, yeah, you couldn't. People were standing on the on the sideline. I know nobody wasn't watching that game. It's too hot to be standing up. It's pathetic. They were just there. It's yeah. pathetic. I don't. I, I don't. I don't know how you could even say anything. And I got FSU fans show it, sharing a clip of uh, DJ. Was DJ? You, you're gonna With lose. With the bad throw. Yeah, DJ, you're gonna lose six games next year. Throw yeah. behind three people into the the cornerback's hands. <laughs> like, I the get tell lies, but it, dude. It was, yeah. how, it, was, it was bad all around. That whole play I, was horrible. Yeah, if I'm the the media team, like I I wouldn't post that. I wouldn't post that. Take no. a take a look at it. Yeah. That was that wasn't a good play. That was a a poor hey. throw. Yeah, so. it's the Miley Cyrus in them. It's the Klein. <laughs> <laughs> And they post that cheesy ass <laughs> video of the coach trying yeah. to hype him up. Like, golly. Yeah, yeah. I, hey, we may only win five man. games, but at least our media team's on, on point. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah, no. It's they, everybody's playing catch up to our media team, and you can tell it's so obvious that it's funny. The media team <laughs> and, and the podcast and the podcast uh YouTubers too. It's all secondary. They might as well forget about that. <laughs> it's all secondary. Yeah. I I would love to uh Take 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 any of them. All. There's some of them I, I can't like. I see like their their interactions on on my own. Like, I I couldn't even talk to you. I couldn't even do it. I couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't have a genuine conversation with you. You know what I mean? Like it would really just uh, happen. Mucky says, "Show what do you think about Ryan?" Hard. Go ahead. I say they're trying too hard. Yeah. Uh, funny you mentioned that. Says, "What do you think about Ryan Montgomery Crystal Ball hopes for Antoine Hill?" Yeah. Look, I actually had it pulled up. He got fong bombed, which is crazy because South mm. Carolina was leading the way by a landslide, and then obviously fong bomb. Which they're overkilling it a little bit. I mentioned it, and that they're really abusing. I think it was a great they capitalized, but now they're abusing the fawn bomb here a little bit. Look, it's almost yeah. like Georgia. They can get what they want because Ryan Montgomery was like a South Carolina, Florida, and Georgia was in it. But it was like Georgia was still had their eyes on maybe like a Julian Lewis or somebody else. And I've been saying this quarterback room is is pretty locked up, and Georgia's gonna have to take a bite here in a minute. And as Crystal Ball happens, he's he's supposed to make his announcement on Wednesday, which look. We never were really in it for Ryan Montgomery. It felt like it's always been Antoine Hill is is where the noise mm. has been at. Um, and we're still at SMU kids, so we'll see how it plays out. But it was almost like Georgia was like, all right, the Julian Lewis verdict is done with. We've got to go all in. And it's like, yeah, yeah, we yeah, snap. Yeah. How do you pick Shane Beamer over any of those schools <laughs> is beyond me. The guy hasn't yeah, developed not- anybody uh, for from a quarterback percent, per, uh, perception. So... It makes sense. I mean, I'm not shocked that he's going there, but it, look, it, it makes me feel a little bit better about the Antoine Hill situation. About Antoine, yeah, jo- yeah. Georgia had to pull the trigger just to make sure they get something. 
I would say this. Um, our recruiting is is being is picking up. Um, guys are excited again about Florida football. Uh, excited about the brand. Um, I love what uh Florida Victorious is doing. Um, the turnout that they had at the spring game. Um, hearing a lot from the fans about interacting with the players and them getting that experience and stuff like that. Um, so I just overall, as far as recruiting, I believe the brand is is rising back up and people are excited about the future, uh, especially when you have like DJ Lagway there and people seeing that they can come and have the same opportunity. We played a lot of young guys last year, looking to play some more young guys this year. Uh, so overall for us recruiting, I believe, I believe we're back up there, man. Um, so uh, hopefully with all your donations, we have the bag to match, <laughs> match uh, the vibes. So keep up with them. Yeah. We uh, Hall of Fame. What's up, baby? What's up, Jason? Says Beamer is toast. I- I'm surprised Beamer saw the job. I don't understand that at all. <laughs> Austin Rogers, Napier. You've been you've been a little little negative, bud. Says Napier be fired yeah. before Uga. We've lost Austin. I don't know what happened to him, but uh, <laughs> hey, go get your sticky note, Austin. It's gonna be all right. Like let's let's take it easy. We got we got enough Q leads in the room. All right, I don't need any more of them <laughs> uh, in here. So look, what what is, just watching LJ McCray and 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 DJ Lagway. Look, I know I know yep. where I stand with these things, but it's like those two guys, I feel like we haven't seen that kind of talent in a very long time. And those two now, guys the alone, just at, at a, look, have we maybe grown that talent and seen talent, but that early on, it's incredible. Off the charts. It's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. LJ, I never, I never seen a defensive lineman with LJ's ability coming in as a freshman. Never seen it. I know we didn't, we don't even have the clip, but everybody saw the one play uh, where he Somebody makes the me tackle. In. Yeah, hold on. Um, I got you. Go ahead. Most of that is pure, pure natural ability. Uh, from a coaching standpoint, I would have liked to see him. I can say what I would like to see, but he made the play. You know, just technique wise, hit the block a little bit better. He shed it and shed it a little bit yeah. better. But it's his athleticism allows him to be able to go behind a uh, uh, door, a uh, back door, and make plays like that. Shout um, out to uh, so. J J J Boy. Florida boy, tag me in it. Here we go. Yeah. You. Yeah, he's able to go um, back door and make the play. And he's just so quick uh, getting the guy's hands off of him, um, not allow him to, to get his hands on him, and, and he gets in the backfield and makes that play. Yeah. Make the hand off. Keep defenses off then, with the, the, the change in rhythm. Quick move. Yeah. Make the hand off. Yeah. You know, I even changed my I even changed my thought process on that because he has a blix or a guy blix in here, so he kind of steps towards the the tackle and makes some whiff easily. Look, yeah, nice arm over. He could have ripped under. He could have did anything, but uh, just to to get Lazy out the way and come make well that play. Too. Yeah, yeah. Let's take a look at this film too with the line a little bit more. Again, same thing we're looking at here. Yep. As soon as the ball move, we, we got guys moving across the line of scrimmage. And, then, and we're blitzing. Um, yeah, this is and just one. Crowding, the, crowding the ball, the way we crowd the ball. If, you, if anybody goes back and just look at last year's film, look at how far off the ball we used to line up. And when the ball snapped, uh, just see what everybody was doing before the ball gets in the quarterback hand. And you can see we were very delayed and this uh, looks, indecisive. This looks a little slower. This looks like we had a little first few steps here. Again, what part of the game is this early on? I don't know when the other part was, so it's interesting to see if this is like, okay, we're tired, we're, we're, we're resorting, resorting back to what we, you know, the what's comfortable, mm-hmm. or is it maybe early on in the game and they need some changes in the second half, but not as explosive as that original clip, but still still better, just not as, right. I, I think, as good as that original clip. It, it yeah, I sense. think just here because, of, uh, because they're sending uh, this guy at the bottom on the blicks, they're not coming out of their hips as fast forward, but they're they're moving at the snap of the ball. So they're supposed to be taking a lateral step. Um, LJ played it well here because he knows that the guy's coming at him, so there's no need to take a real, really big step. He kind of baits him up, um, which lets me know that he's a smart player as a defensive lineman, um, knowing that the guy, if he steps towards him, there's no need to take a big step because you want to get right back into that gap behind him. Now, I think if if Manuel gets his block, well, seventeen whoever that is, is that DK. I don't. I, I, if you know the run of the ball here, how do you 
<laughs> you let him right by. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, he, 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 I don't know why he didn't block him, but, uh, didn't even try. Yeah, he, it looked like he's trying to get up to the safety, hoping that the, uh, Agent Zero here wouldn't have done his job. It's like he just wanted to just kind of chip him and then, and then get out, but, yeah. Uh, I mean, maybe, maybe if, if Manuel holds his block, he, 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 he should be able to blow through there, but, yeah. Good stuff. But LJ, man, just yeah, LJ, he's he's gonna be man by the time he's already a freshman doing this, man. By the time his junior year, uh, we only got three years with him. <laughs> but by the time his junior year come, uh, he's he's gonna be annihilating people out there. It's gonna he be has, his stuff. arms are so long. Yeah, it's crazy. I didn't know his arms were that long. <laughs> he's a big boy. I, I, he got game oh, yeah. he's a big boy. Uh, and then I saw you with Cam. A man looked good, man. Uh, far as weight wise and stuff like that. Um, no, everybody was lean. giving him a hard time. Yeah, he looked, man. He looked, yeah. he looked north and south instead of east and west. You know what I'm saying? So that was good. <laughs> <laughs> that was good to see. Well, boys and girls, great show. Uh, appreciate you, Champ, for for rock and roll with us on this Monday. Sure. Coming late. It's for a sure. long day, but uh, we're yeah. we're rocking and rolling. Good show as always. Of course, Wednesday's gonna be an absolute banger. Josh, pray, Uncle Lou. Should be jam packed. Look, if you think that I'm going to oh, tell some lies, you got, you yeah, got Josh on. Yeah, oh, Josh, might, Josh okay. might a little loose. So if you guys yeah. want to continue <laughs> to be negative, I probably wouldn't go to that show. Just gonna keep it real. Uh, but, I thought I was somebody. Something. Josh is funny, man. I love that kid, man. That's a beast. Sammy the Bull Gator says five bucks. If for some reason our O line play doesn't improve, do you think we see more DJ packages being used due to his mobility compared to Mertz? Good question. I think just knowing Billy, he's probably gonna stick to his guns. I don't think he's yeah. he's not one to really. I, I could be wrong. I think he's gonna have a set amount of packages, and unless shit goes completely haywire, he sticks to those packages regardless of how things fluctuate. Uh, o line play was good though. Um, I wouldn't say it was bad. And of course, you know we'll have limited time. Uh, can't look at every everything, but I'll try to. I'll go back and find some stuff uh, regarding O line to just highlight some of that stuff for you guys to see. Uh, what they did well and why I like it. But it was a lot of positive um, from both sides of the ball. So just because, you know, I played defensive line, I highlight the stuff I see from the defensive linemen that held us back last year. But there's definitely some great offensive line stuff in there um, that we, we should be proud of. And, I, and I'll get some of that. I'll post it on my Twitter so you guys can see. Love it. Stephen Harris, boys and girls, would be good. We love you. Like and subscribe. Go Gators, baby. Yes, like and subscribe. Peace, <laughs> Yes, sir.